Okay, in this uh, lesson, we are looking at uh, cornering. So, in your car, for example, is a picture, and uh, you're travelling along, and if you want to go around this roundabout, the one that's shown here on the left, if you want to go around this roundabout, around like so, then there's going to be a force um, making you go in that direction, i.e. towards the centre of that circle. Alright, so then uh, B on the right there, so you can see the, the forces that are acting on the car, so we've got our gravitational force acting down, our normal reaction force acting up, now those two um, are perpendicular to the direction that we are moving, or going around the corner, I should say. So um, they don't actually contribute to that centripetal force. And so, of course, we do, do have a centripetal force, and that's what's shown here. So the sum of our forces, now this centripetal force, what, what is it? Well... In this case, as I remember, as I said, the centripetal force is not a force that's in run and right, but provided by something. And in this case, what holds the car on the road, of course, is the tyres and friction. So friction, the tyres and road. So this centripetal force, this one here that I've, is the friction of the tyres on the road. And how does that work? Well, if we're going around a circle, um, the car is actually wants to keep going this way. So there's a force that makes it go around this way. So um, that's then the friction between the tyres and the road because the as you, when you start turning, it wants to go continue straight ahead. So friction and tyres acts towards the centre. And so then we get our circular path. Now that's all very well, but on flat roads, there's a, a limit to the amount of friction that we can have there. And once we go too fast, then the car would skid. So what's done in the design of roads in particular, but not just roads, uh, cycling velodromes are also like this, is this we have what we call banked roads. Um, and Typically, things that you would experience there, are like the on and off ramps of freeways, have bankings on them. Okay, so here's a diagram now from a banked road. So diagram A there again just looks like you know going around in a circle. From above, doesn't really look any different to before. However, when we look from the rear view. It's quite different than before. So now we've got gravity acting straight down. Gravity always acts straight down. We've got the normal reaction force, and the normal reaction force always acts 90 degrees to the surface the thing is on. <clears throat> so we now don't have these things um, being balanced. All right, now, there's another concept we've got to look at something called the design speed. And what design speed means is that the friction between tyres and road There's equal and opposite. Um, so what that means is that we 
for design speed. Um, no need to um, take into account. All right. So if so, that's in here. Yep, in here. We don't need to worry about that. All right. So, what do we have? Okay, so if we take our normal reaction force and we take that out, there it is here. And then we also take our weight force, force of gravity. There it is here, acting straight down. And when we add, put them together, acting head to tail, and then we get the sum of our forces. So the sum of our normal reaction and our gravitational force um, is that there. And what is that? That's our centripetal. See it. All right, bad luck. I'm sure you can cope with that. All right, so that's our centripetal force. <clears throat> All right, and that's the one that makes our car in this case, or our bike if we're on a velodrome, go around um, the circle. So, what is the benefit of that is that you can actually corner more quickly <clears throat> than um, you would if it was flat. Now, that's important on on and off ramps on freeways so that you don't know, get in and cause a bit of an issue. All right, so let's have a look. So if you're not at the design speed, so for example, just, you know, if you're not, if you're at the design speed, then that's good. If you're not at the design speed, if you're going slower than what it's designed for, you'll slide down the track. If you're going faster, you'll drift up. All right, so let's have a look at an example. Okay, the example here, this is an Olympic velodrome, so curved section of track and Olympic velodrome is a radius of 50 metres. So, radius is 50. And it's banked at an angle of 42 degrees. the horizontal. Part A says calculate the neck force on the cyclist riding at the design speed. All right, so here's our, our diagram for part A. So there's our cyclist acting on the velodrome, weight force acting straight down, force of gravity, mg. Uh, normal reaction force acting at 90 degrees to the surface, there it is there. And then of course when we add those head to tail, then we get our, some of those forces acting towards the centre of the circle. So therefore there is our centripetal um, force. So if we take and look at our diagram here, what do we know? about our diagram, well we can use a few, <coughs> excuse me, we can use a couple of different things. Um, the angle that we definitely know, the force of gravity, we definitely be able to figure that out. And then some of our forces are what we are interested in. So we've got an angle, the opposite and the adjacent. So what we know is that tan 42 degrees is the opposite, which is the sum of our forces, which is what we're after, over the adjacent, which is the force of gravity. Now, when you look in the second part, it says that the uh, cyclist has a mass of 75. Um, now, unless we use that, we can't actually do the question. So tan 42 is the sum of the forces over 75. And then when we 
get our calculator out and we do the calculation, we find that the sum of the forces is 660 Newton. So the net force acting on the cyclist riding at design speed is that, 660 Newton. All right, so remember the, the design speed is about the friction and that this way, all right? And so in the design speed, the force is in this direction here, parallel to the... Um, Velodrome surface is equal to zero, but we still need a force to make the person go around in the circle, and that's what this one here is. All right, part B: At what speed would the cyclists travel if they were to experience zero frictional forces up or down the track? And then, i.e., what is the design speed? All right, so these zero frictional forces up and down the track. All right, design speed. All right, so we've worked out what the centripetal force for the design speed is. So now our centripetal force is 660 Newton. And our mass of our person is uh, 75. And what do we know about our centripetal force? Is that our centripetal force is equal to mv squared on R, is our centripetal force formula, so 660 Newton equals mass 75 times the velocity squared that we're after, over the radius, let's go back to the radius, the radius there it is, 50 metres, so over 50, and uh, then when we rearrange that, we get that V would be the square root of 441, which is 21 metres per second. All right, so the cyclist, if they travel at that speed, uh, remains in the same place. So if they went slower than that, they would be drifting. So, so here's our cyclist. If they went slower than 21 metres per second, there'd be a net force down that way and they'd drift down. If they went faster, then there'd be a net force up this way and they'd slide up the track. All right, but design speed's what we're interested in. Um, so no drifting up or down the track. All right, so there's some uh, text questions there, page 169, um, for you to have a go at now.